Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Let's Read Together. Today I have a really nice book that um, covers one of my favorite um, families of moths. The giant silk moth aka the Saturnidae. And those of you who have followed me on YouTube for a longer time will know that I breed a lot of Saturnidae and that I also research them. So um, this book, uh, I got it uh, cheaply from a friend and I'm really happy to have it because it has some amazing pictures and information. And it's called Giant Silk Moths, Color Mimicry and Camouflage by uh, Philip House and Kirby Wolf. Now Kirby Wolf in particular is uh, someone I'm very familiar with. Uh, I still talk to him from time to time and uh, he is somebody that in his time has bred uh, from all over the world many species of silk moth. Just look him up online and you'll see many of his pictures. He has bred most of the rare species too such as uh, Eogroa trimeni, uh, many African buneas uh, like Gonimbrasias. Uh, Imbrasia species, but also many Automeres, Durfia, uh, Arsenura, Copiopteryx, South American species, uh, Polytisana. So, uh, Kirby Wolf for me is almost sort of like a role model. It's like if somebody asks me, Who do you want to be when you grow up? My answer is, I would like to breed as much silk moths as Kirby does. So uh, Kirby, if you're watching this, I know you comment here from time to time, although you're not very active on social media. Thanks for all your good work. So let's take a look at the contents. As you can see these photos, um, many of them are... I think the photos, uh, of course, are by Philip and Kirby too. I don't know who did uh, who and who wrote the text and who made the pictures. Although I immediately recognize um, the style of Kirby's photography. Anyways, um, well, it's basically uh, a book about silk moths. And here we see a nice picture of a Copaxa intermediata. And a forward. And here a beautiful photograph of an Aurevillia species. It's a silk moth that I also have yet to breed. Some more words about color and mimicry. And it does contain some interesting information about the biology of the uh, Saturni day, to be honest. Although I gotta say that if you're looking to buy a book in order because you want to learn a lot from it, I think uh, most of the appeal is this book is the photography because it contains pictures of many rare species. And this is one of my, my dream species, the Eogroa trimeni. Uh, it only flies in South Africa in April um, and uh, May and June, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the Namakwa land province of uh, South Africa. And it's a very primitive species of Saturnidae. It um, has both traits of the Eurotini and the Buneini tribe, and it's somewhat of an intermediate species uh, between these tribes. Uh, it's probably an evolutionary remnant, a primitive moth that was trapped in this area. So uh, I would really like to go to Kami's Kroon or South, America, uh, South Africa someday and film videos of this moth. Maybe it will happen, who knows. But I think my YouTube channel will have to become much more successful than it is today. Oops, sorry for this. It will have to become much more successful than it already is today in order to do, do stunts of such a big proportion. Here see you an awesome uh, Agapema Galbina from Mexico. Citheronias and Serato Campine. This is the Citheronia Vogleri, one of my dream species. Uh, if you know, if you uh, follow my YouTube channel and look at my playlist, you'll see that there's one playlist called Citheronia, and you'll see that I've bred many species of them. But uh, the Vogleri, it's uh, very hard to get livestock from. As far as I know, nobody ever collected them. So maybe I'll have to travel to collect them myself someday. Hmm, that's interesting. A hawk moth in a book about silk moth, but um, it probably makes sense in the context of the text. I'm skimming through this book, but uh, we're probably talking about the function and form of uh, their shapes and colors. And uh, the, the head, the death head on the, the skull on the thorax of the death head hawk moth is a nice example of this. Here we see the um, uh, 
Edwards Atlas Moth, the Archeo Atacus Edwardsi. Picture is a little bit cramped here on this page because, uh, yeah, that's that's because of the morphology, the exterior of the book. But uh, it's a really nice silk moth species, one of the largest species, um, a relative of the common Atlas moth, but um, still an evolutionary distant enough to be in another genus. Here you see some nice Caligula's, Caligula Simla. I still have to breed this one, but I have overwintering eggs. Here you see a beauty, the Politisana Cinera Sense. Uh, for these beauties, you gotta go to Chile, and they feed on um, Peruvian pepper trees, Genus Molle, but they uh, can also accept some other types of food plants in captivity, like I believe pistachio and um, Anacardiae, and I believe. Maybe even prunus, cherry, but we'll have to see. Absolutely beautiful. I cannot comment much on the, con on the contents, uh, I mean the text of this book, because um, I'm skimming through it really fast, but uh, there's some nice information uh, that is talking, it's, ra it's rather general uh, information that this book is talking about, it's about the general biology of Saturni Day. And uh, here you see a beautiful, what is it, a Copaxa sapatosa. Hmm. Well, you know what? I know a lot of species, but it's the first time I'm seeing this one. So, yes, even I, a guy who obsessively looks at pictures of Saturnia Day, still sees new species once in a while. And this is why they are so fun. This is why insects in general also f are so fun. Because there are so many of them. That you can work with them for a lifetime and still see new things every week. Here we see an awesome Saturnia species. Uh, Saturnia Mendoci. What's it? Mendocino. Oh yes, I've seen those before from America, but people really rarely breed them. It's very hard to get livestock of them. So nice Aeacus. And interestingly, some Sphingidae larva too. Awesome Binea. Sorry for the time skip here. The battery of my camera went empty, so I just went to replace it. But uh, now we are at camouflage and concealment. And it is my guess that we are going to see some Saturni uh, blend in well with their environment. Now these ones I recognize, they are Lonomia species. Uh, it's one of my favorite genera of Saturni Day. And they have a special place in my heart because it's the first species I published a research article about. And here we see, um, oh, this is a Copaxa and this is a Curricula. Curricula Andre and uh, Copaxa Simpson, both species that I have never seen yet. And here we see a beautiful color plate of a Copaxa. Copaxa are easy to breed, by the way. They're really nice species. You should give them a try if you have the opportunity or live in South or Central America. It's quite a lot of species for them. So uh, now we see the way that... Um, some species uh, scare their opponents with um, warning signals, such as these eye spots. Now the Cithronia vogleria mentioned before, uh, Caterpillar of Cispinx uh, quadrilineata and Cithronia lobasis. Here we see some Durfia and the Titea. And this department is basically uh, talking about their colors, uh, their camouflage, uh, the way they blend them with their environment, uh, the ways that species can look similar to each other, etc. <clears throat> well, here see we some of the better camouflage species of Saturni Day. Um, there are some Aeacus and Copaxas. <coughs> Generally speaking, this uh, sorry, <coughs> this type of uh, Saturni Day can look like dead leaves or a piece of tree bark. And uh, this is talking about counter shading, the way that uh, some moths have color patterns that compensate for the shadow they cast and some beautiful larva too and um, this is really nice one caterpillar of rotsia the hop fairy and uh, some nice uh, well camouflaged automerus larva 
Holocerina. Just going through this because it's a large book, one of my favorites, the Copiopteryx. Sadly, they only feed on Sapota Sea, which are extremely difficult to obtain and grow in Europe. But if you live in South America, they are breedable. Sadly, not if you live in Europe. But I guess maybe I'll have to travel to film those species. Now, this is not Dreocampa rubica. Now, this is uh, it should be Psilopigida walkeri, which is a relative of the rosy maple moth, but much bigger. It's basically a rosy maple moth on steroids that's found in South America. And um, Oof, I tried to breed these pseudo uh, I raised them to, like, what was it? The third or fourth instar, and then they died. Sadly, I have to try again. Dirfia, I think we're gonna s speed up the pace at which we're going through this book, because uh, otherwise it's gonna be a long video. Beautiful Outermira's larva. Just, I'm breeding one of these right now. Yalifora. Turniopiri. Uh, this is undoubtedly a drawing by um, Maria Sibylia Merian, which is an entomologist, I believe from the 7th century. That was one of the first people that made illustrations of the full life cycles of Lepidoptera. Uh, Hemileuca species. Uh, this should be an Anterea perni, at least I think so. Maybe I came to my conclusion too fast. But uh, Emperors and peacocks, well, it should be Saturnia, Caligula. Oh. It's nice to see out the mirrors in there too. Eye spots, of course. They're really prominent in these types of Saturnia. Oh, this should be an Outermeris Gamodus, Aglia Tau. I think this part has emphasis on the eye spots. A nice Rodinia Fugax. Another species that you can see on my channel. Saturnia Pavonia. So uh, basically it's um I think this book, it has educational value, but if you're really experienced and you know a lot about Saturday Day, the information uh, is not going to be, you know, very helpful in general. Uh, it's basically more like the general information uh, about eye spots and camouflage and defense mechanisms, etc. The basics that most of us will know. Anyways, uh, the, the really nice thing about this book, in my opinion, is mainly the photography, which is uh, excellent. And I, must, I recognize most photos from Kirby Wolf, who has done a lot of breeding. So it's really nice. Here's the Spanish moon moth, Gaelsia Isabella. Well, a fox. I guess that's one of the most predators that many birds are afraid of. and. Uh, one of the reasons they are scared of eye spots and markings that resemble predators. Ah, the Chinese moon moth, Accius Zibernardi. Beauty. Of course, I've read it before. Comet moths, moon moths, the Atlas moths and their relatives. Well, Hercules moth, that's, that one's still not on my channel. I should, I should film them sometime. Or Chalias, which are direct relatives of uh, Atacus. I would expect to see a before here and here as well, perhaps. Ah, Ostiadia Zacateca, a day flyer, by the way. That's kind of interesting. Okay, let's skip through this a bit more fast. I think most of you will get the point and the idea behind these books. But, uh, it's a nice book if you want to enjoy some illustrations and uh, information about these types of moths. Anyway, um, <clears throat> thanks for watching. This was Let's Read Together. Another episode with a new book and uh, see you next time.